Hi, this is Television Nation, and I'm Tracy Swedlow here to talk to Max Kailhoff, who's the VP of Marketing and Growth from Realize. Uh, welcome to the show, Max. Hi, Tracy. It's good to speak with you again. Yes, I'm really thrilled you're here. We uh, uh, looked into what Realize did a while ago. Uh, it was more uh, you know, engrossing um, in terms of what we discussed. But today, I responded to a blog that you sent out all about how you guys are analyzing the political ads that are out there today, Biden versus Trump. And you've had some really interesting findings, so I thought we would go over that. What is the top-down analysis, Max? What's happening? Sure. Um, well, to start off, um, what we found is that the, the presidential election ads are failing to win consumer attention. And uh, so attention is a big thing that we, that we study. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, we found a bunch of nuances around uh, the, the, the two major parties, you know, Biden and Trump. And, uh, um, you know, we, we found that actually Biden is a little bit better um, than Trump at capturing attention, uh, but both candidates actually fail to uh, to uh, uh, drive emotional impact. And to bring, a, I guess, a little bit of our context um, in, in why this study is so unique, um, you know, we, we um, actually study, we perform facial coding on a, uh, nearly 2,000 views to the, of uh, roughly 11 ads. And I'll share my screen for just a second. Um, uh, and you did this like in what period of time? So we did this actually last week. Um, so if you can let me share my screen, I'll show you a quick visual here. Okay. Just very, very quickly for any new folks on, on what we do and why this study is so unique is that um, we tapped into nearly 2,000 views uh, out of 11 ads, roughly 160 uh, uh, participants uh, viewed each ad. And um, so what we're looking at is the actual real attention of, of, of human eyes on screens. And we're also looking at emotional responses at every sec at every millisecond uh, for the uh, for the the major ads that we that we looked at. So uh, this is sort of the just very quickly just kind of the um, the science behind what we did because this, this analysis is fairly unique. But what we wanted to do um, is to uh, take a selection of recent ads um, that were particularly nationally focused. So we took a we took a mix of um, 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 uh, ads from were aired on national television uh, programming, some of the football games, um, and then and then some of the shorter shorter digital ads that you would typically see on Facebook, and um, and then I'll I'll bring up uh, some some visuals of uh, of those right here. Uh, so I'm actually uh, dialed in on our blog post, um, which uh, anyone else can reference. Um, but from what, but I, from no, what I understand is, the, um, as you bring that up, uh, the reason why there was not as much engagement is because um, people were turning off on negative ads as opposed to anything that seemed positive. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And so that, there's. That were too we, long. Yeah. So when we look at an ad, we're looking at uh, a couple key things that really determine the um, outcome of that ad based on the creative. So. There's uh, what we call capture, the ability of an ad to uh, hook a person into the creative. Uh, then we have what we call retain. So we look at what is the ability of that ad to uh, hold the audience for the duration of the ad. And then we, we then we look at what's called encode. And encode means the ability of that creative to drive emotional peaks and valleys. And that's very important for any ad because that's what creates favorability and memorability. But uh, okay. yeah, so what we saw, uh, a couple key findings. So the the um, uh, the Biden ads tended to be much uh, there's there was uh, much more positive and uplifting messaging. You know, this was not really necessarily this was not a content analysis, but what we what we saw was the Biden ads were um, had more um, uh, more positive messaging, more uplifting, and the Biden ads also also tended to um, use more diversity of durations. So it's you know it's actually harder to maintain attention if your ad is longer. It's easier to hold attention for six seconds than it is for 30 seconds. And, um, and then we saw that the, the negative messaging tend to uh, cause people to tune out. So uh, just sort of a, a pattern. Um, and uh, so as a result, if you, if, you, um, if you have a shorter ad and more positive messaging, you're more likely to hold a person. 
and uh, you're more likely to hold them to the end of that of that spot. And if you think about it from a media buying perspective, um, uh, you know you don't want to pay for a 30 second spot if you're going to lose 75 percent of your audience in the first 10 seconds. Uh, that's a lot of wasted a lot of wasted media. So the creative has a direct impact on the media effectiveness in that regard. And so we saw sort of the opposite with Trump, where um, a lot of negative tonality, um, a lot of a lot more sort of attack aggressiveness in in the messaging. And this is no judgment on what's the right or wrong way to run a campaign. But uh, what we did see is that uh, the audience tend to get very distracted and tune out much quicker um, uh, than with the Biden ads. And 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 then. Uh, Compared to, to 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 Biden, we saw Trump using a lot more of the uh, of, of the longer ad formats, and so if you had people tuning out earlier and you're spending for entire 30 second durations, um, you have a whole lot of your of your of your ad duration, your your sort of your you know the 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 thing that you paid for uh, going um, going uh, you know. To, a, to an empty stadium, <laughs> so uh, so that so that was set virtual definitely. characters. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Did, did you say you did not analyze the responsiveness to the content itself uh, over and above just um, whether it's positive versus negative, or did you? Uh, so we so we were not looking for we we're not doing a judgment on positive or negative response. You know, does it make people happy or sad? Uh, we were looking specifically for attention. And, okay. and and what we found is that the negative uh, messaging uh, caused a drop off much much earlier in attention versus the positive messaging. But you and, weren't you weren't measuring specific types of content like this this candidate said this uh, versus this candidate said that specific piece of content. You weren't really measuring right. that. Yeah, this this was not a this was not a content analysis. Is this something that you pursued on your own? Or were you hired to do this research? Uh, this was this was completely funded by uh, by by Realize uh, uh, as a just pure objective, uh, quick take. And uh, again, it was a limited sample. It wasn't the complete body of creative coming out of uh, both both presidential uh, election camps. But uh, they were some of the they were some of the uh, more nationally oriented messaging that had come out very recently. So we feel it's a good we feel it's a good snapshot, and it's not entirely, again, it's not entirely representative of their entire ad portfolio and every single affiliated or not affiliated group putting messaging out about the candidates. But these were directly from the candidates themselves, and these they were pretty distinct techniques. And the uh, and and while Biden was better at capturing attention, there was a, another big surprise. Well, a, a big surprise that, and that was that. Um, both uh, both candidates had um, uh, very low encoding. And now, uh, what is encoding? Encoding is uh, a term that uh, that marketers you know often use uh, to describe the um, uh, the impact of a message on the brain. Like, what, what was the what was the impression, the lasting impression of a marketing message on the brain? And encoding is a word to describe that, and that's what that's what we call it. So. Uh, the level of encoding that for both candidates was exactly the same and very low. And what that means is that when, when we look for encoding, what we're looking for uh, using AI is the uh, presence of emotional peak and valley within the attention span of the ad. So if you, and, and, and if you think about a story that, that has a buildup, huge suspense, maybe some big climatic event, and then an outcome. Uh, those are those are uh, those are sort of mechanics that drive uh, that drive emotion. Um, they, they keep you tuned in, they keep you dialed in, they, they um, it may make your heartbeat go up, uh, you know, it might be positive response or negative response. Um, regardless, the presence of those peaks and valleys is what encodes the brain. And it proves out that the AI shows that when you have uh, a high level of those peaks and valleys, the ad is much, much more likely in post campaign uh, testing uh, or, 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 or even cert, you can, you can validate this with post campaign survey tests 
the AI proves um, that when you have those peaks and valleys that the ads are considered more favorable and have higher re uh, recall memorability. So both of the, all of the candidates ads across the board combined had very, very low um, encoding uh, ability. Do you think and, it's because people have made up their minds, or do you think it's just because the ads didn't weren't really gripping people anyway? Yes. Yeah. So here's so um, I can't tell you for sure from the data that we have. Uh, it pointed to a phenomenon happening. Exactly why is it happening? Um, I have I have two uh, two explanations um, that I two oh, two theories. Um, so uh, one of them is your your. Uh, your point that you just made is that uh, probably most um, most Americans and and our and our consumer respondents participants in the study were all general population Americans. So this was not swing states or liberal. This was a this was a general population sample to get kind of a just overall country snapshot of sentiment. Um, so yes, um, the the reality is that we're in a polarized nation today, where probably most people have already made up their mind. And if somebody has already made up their mind, uh, they might be, you know, uh, more likely to just be unaffected by uh, any sort of messaging from a candidate. You know, they sort of hear it, they kind of, you know, they, they've created a box or a shell and their mind is set. Um, so th that's that's one thing I'm, that, that, that's probably happening. Uh, and there's another element, and that's that if you look at political messaging and political advertising, it's it's often monolithic and 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 narrow, in in that uh, uh, candidates and campaigns love to repeat talking points, talking points and talking points. Well, talking points are not necessarily uh, narrative storytelling nor interesting. Um, they're simply talking points. And and disciplined communications managers and disciplined politicians and spokespeople will stick to the talking points. And uh, so. Our other theory is that um, the presence of emotional peaks and valleys, you know, the emotional response to these ads was fairly absent because uh, the candidates uh, very often, they, they tend to stick to very narrow talking points, um, which, uh, which fail to, you know, tell a story narrative with ups, you know, uh, you know, with suspense and, 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 and climaxes or outcomes. And, and so we think that was uh, partly to play as well. Or perhaps, I will conjecture. I will make. I will make a conjecture, which is, the topics are not appealing to people. Yes, uh, yes, uh, that that is true too. And, you know, I think if we if we had drilled down on some of the candidates' messaging, that was tailored to specific swing states with where certain issues are much more hot button than others, uh, you would see that 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 phenomenon emphasized. Um, but uh, that's that's certainly true. Is that even in, even general population messaging is why we selected these ads? Is they we we saw that they were targeted to uh, particularly to large uh, general U.S. Um, is that e even still they're they're trying to they're trying to sway the the opinion of a very few undecided uh, uh, voters, and so um, you know it's that's that's. Uh, Goes goes to show, um, you know, they're 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 at the last mile and uh, trying to reach those those folks and 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 even in a general population message or a general population uh, targeting uh, such as an NFL football game, um, you know, they're desperate to reach them. Um, they're desperate to reach those. It also says to me, and I think you're showing this that they're not using data very wisely. Um, not only because they're not using shorter formats, as you are proving here, but also they're not understanding who their undecided voters are, where they are, and actually, more importantly, what those undecided voters are concerned about, and you know how to motivate people, really, uh, on the topics that are of most importance to them. There's something missing here, I think. Yeah, yeah well, that's the lesson is, is, I mean, targeting always matters. Um, you know, sometimes you're unable to target for whatever reason. Um, sometimes you, you know, you need to spend budget. Sometimes the only way you can reach people is by a broader, you know, a broader coverage. Uh, but certainly out of this analysis, the key lessons are, number one, stay positive, err on the positive. Two, 
err on the shorter. In three, if you can figure out how to get a story narrative into a shorter ad, you're going to drive more emotional response, which leads to better favorability about the brand that you're advertising, in this case, a candidate, and greater recall uh, over time, which is ultimately uh, what they're trying to do. And, um, and I think, you know, uh, what I can tell you is that, uh, well, you know, Realize is not, we, we don't take a political leaning as a, as a company, uh, but we are, we are, we are powering, you know, the, the measurement uh, among an, a, a few different constituents in the presidential race. And uh, we're seeing a shift in some of the thinking, some of the more, some of the old thinking is, you know, let's, let's uh, test our creative in a focus group and see how much people are likely or less likely to say they'll vote for one candidate versus the other based off of a, uh, you know, a creative that they saw in a, in a, in a TV ad or, or a TV storyboard. Um, one thing that, you know, one dirty secret, secret in advertising is that that self-reported, uh, self-reported opinion uh, it very seldom uh, matches the behavior of people in the real world. Um, so uh, this, you know, this technique is, is, is more contemporary and we're starting to see some of the more sophisticated players in the political advertising arena uh, take a look because uh, this is not about fine tuning an ad because uh, a, a, a focus group, you know, 10 seconds later is going to say, oh, that ad makes me want to vote for this candidate more. What, what, this, what this method, this technique is doing is uh, actually using passive behavioral observation in AI to maximize the message delivery and the message impact uh, on the, around, the, around the, the, the concept of attention. Uh, if you don't have attention, you cannot deliver a, a, a message to sway one way or the other. And that's, and that's a, a fundamental building block, which political advertising has, has largely ignored, um, but is starting to become more attuned to. Um, one last question, because we were trying to keep this a little short uh, than our normal interviews. Uh, can you say who the producers of, uh, like which producers of these videos did the best? Like which outlet, do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like who was producing the ads that had the most effectiveness? Sure. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't uh, study who are the producers, but what I can, uh, on our website, on our blog, we actually have, uh, we have a, a rating called a quality score. And the quality score factors in those, the major components which drive an attentive audience with emotional impact. And so it's a very reliable, repeatable method that uh, some of the largest advertisers are now using to make their creative selections on their digital video and TV. Um, but we do have a we do have a uh, a ranking of all the individual ads. So the Biden ads were all pretty similar. Um, we're, we're pretty they, they all scored pretty similarly. Um, and and even the Biden ads, if we compare them to all the all other political ads in our in our in our database, we're we're fairly mediocre performers. There were no breakout strong performers by either candidate. Um, and then if you look at Trump, there were some definitive um, losers and some definitive mediocre performers. So um, there was a, an ad called Promises Made, Promises Kept, which was, I believe, a, uh, which was a clip from uh, one of his conventions where he had a, uh, one of his black constituents talking about how Trump was uh, praising Trump for his inclusion um, and uh, his ability to keep promises. And uh, and then and, and that was that was Trump's strongest performer in it, within the set that we looked at. And then Trump's lowest performer was an ad called "Biden Avoids Answering Questions," and and that was uh, actually was was uh, was literally a a a recut or a clip uh, from one of the recent debates where uh, Biden uh, avoided one of the questions he was asked, and and the, the Trump campaign you know tried to take advantage of that by turning it into an ad, and it actually turned out to be the lowest performer with the, the highest drop-off rate, the least attention. So, um, you know, those, those things matter. Uh, having a story, uh, being able to capture the attention and, and looking at the elements that hold your attention. Otherwise, you're, you're spending media for uh, an audience that isn't there. All right. That sounds so great. Thanks, Max. I will direct people to your site, which is realeyes.tv. Realeyesit.com. 
Oh, realize it. Okay, sorry. Why I thought it was realize D. My mistake. Realizeit.com. Yeah. And uh, to go see um, this report on your blog, and there are more charts there. And uh, please um, uh, sign up for Realize a Service. It's very interesting. <laughs> no, no, you didn't pay me to say that. Anyway, thank you very much, Max. I really appreciate it. Uh, Max is the VP of Marketing and Growth. And uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll touch in with you another time as you continue to do this interesting reporting. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I'm Tracy Budlow, Television Nation. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.